غسل or a bath. Allah glory be to him created mankind and jinn kind to worship him alone and made the salah or prayer one of the forms of worship which we are ordered to perform as well as circumvallation and reading the Quran and for all of these acts which are performed to become nearer to Allah the person needs to have purified himself from any minor hadith by performing wudu or major hadith by taking a ghusl. A ghusl, according to the Arabs, means to cover the whole body with water. According to the scholars of fiqh, ghusl means covering the whole body with water in a particular manner, with the intention of worshipping Allah, exalted and high is He. Ghusl is obligatory in two cases, the first one being after the emission of semen. Due to Allah saying, if you are in a state of janaba or ritual impurity, purify yourself or bathe your whole body. And the saying of the Prophet, peace be upon him, to Ali, may Allah be pleased with him. When you ejaculate, take a ghusl, referring to its exit and gushing forth, that is, semen. If a person wakes up and realizes he had a wet dream yet didn't ejaculate, he does not have to make ghusl. But if he ejaculates after waking up, he must take a ghusl. If he wakes up and doesn't remember having a wet dream, yet he finds semen on himself, or on his clothes, or on his bed, etc., he must take a ghusl. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Water is only from water, that is, wash with water, if the water of semen exits from the body. If it exits due to some sort of sickness and not from sexual stimulation, then he does not have to take ghusl. Similarly, if his state necessitated a ghusl, and he took a ghusl, but then semen exited immediately after the ghusl, he is not obliged to take another ghusl. He only has to make wudu. The second condition that makes ghusl obligatory is sexual intercourse. The scholars have defined this as the meeting of the male and female sexual organs, even if ejaculation does not occur. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, when the circumcised penetrates the circumcised, bathing is compulsory. Ghusl is also compulsory when an unbeliever becomes a Muslim, as the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, ordered Qais ibn Asim to take a bath when he became a Muslim. Similarly, ghusl is compulsory at the end of the menstrual cycle or postnatal bleeding. This is in accordance with the hadith related by Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, in which the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, told Fatima bint Abi Hubaysh, when menstruation starts, you should stop praying, and when it leaves, take a purificatory bath then start praying again. It is the consensus of the scholars of Islam that postnatal bleeding is just like menstruation. And when a person's life comes to an end and his time of death arrives, it is compulsory on his family to wash him. This is due to the saying of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, when he told those preparing Zainab, his daughter, for burial, wash her three times, five times or more, if you think it is necessary. As soon as one of the above acts that make ghusl obligatory happens, a Muslim should go to a suitable place to wash himself, as it is obligatory on him to wash the entire body with water with the intention of purification. This can be done in any manner possible, but emulating the way of the Prophet, peace be upon him, is recommended. This is the way the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him, took a bath, as described by one of the mothers of the believers, Maymuna. May Allah Almighty be pleased with her. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, placed a container of water for bathing on the ground and then used a handful of water to rub his right hand over his left hand twice or thrice. He then washed his private parts and then beat his hands on the ground or against the wall twice or thrice. Next, he rinsed out his mouth and nose 
and washed his face and arms. After that, he poured water over his head and then washed the remainder of his body. Finally, he moved aside and washed his feet. Then she said, Then I offered him a piece of cloth to wipe his body, but he refused to take it. He wiped the remaining water off his body using his hands. Thus, the description is as follows. Number one, the hands are washed twice or thrice. Number two, the private parts are washed. Number three, the hands are beaten on the ground or against a wall two or three times. Number four, wudu is performed with the exclusion of the head and feet. Number five, water is poured on the head. Number six, the remaining part of the body is washed. Number seven, the legs are washed after moving slightly to the side. There remain some points to discuss concerning ghusl. The first is that if a woman's hair is braided, she is not obliged to undo her braids to perform a ghusl. This applies to purification from a menstrual cycle or janaba. It is enough for her to pour water over them while making sure water reaches the roots of her hair. This is because Um Salama, may Allah be pleased with her, said, I said, O Messenger of Allah, I am a woman with tight braids on my head. Should I undo it to perform ghusl for janaba? He said, No, it is sufficient that you only pour three scoops of water, that is, with hands held together, over your head. Then pour water over the rest of your body to be purified. The scholars have stated that it is recommended for a woman to take a piece of cotton or tissue, put musk on it and wipe the path the blood used to take after she has bathed due to her menstrual cycle stopping. Concerning this, Aisha related that Asma, may Allah be pleased with them, asked the Prophet, peace be upon him, about how a woman should bathe after her menstrual cycle stops. So she said, Asma asked the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, about washing after menstruation. He said, everyone amongst you should use water mixed with leaves of the lote tree and cleanse herself well. And then pour water on her head and rub it vigorously till it reaches the roots of the hair. Then she should pour water on it. Afterwards, she should take a piece of cotton smeared with musk and cleanse herself with it. Asma said, how should she cleanse herself with the help of that? Upon this he, the Messenger of Allah, said, Praise be to Allah, she should cleanse herself. Aisha said in a subdued tone that she should apply it to the trace of blood. Some important points still remain to be discussed. As the scholars have stated, that if a Muslim makes ghusl to purify himself from major hadith and prays, his prayer is valid, whether he intended wudu with this ghusl or not. Also, when one is in a state of ritual impurity, it is forbidden for him to pray. Allah says, O you who believe, approach not the prayer when you are in a drunken state until you know or are aware of what you utter, nor while you are in a state of janabah, except while traveling on the way, that is, where there is not enough water, or just passing through a mosque, until you take a bath. Similarly, circumambulating the Kaaba, or the sacred house, is forbidden. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, circumambulation of the Kaaba is a form of salah, or prayer and touching the Noble Qur'an, due to Allah saying, None shall touch the Qur'an except the purified. The Prophet peace be upon him also said, None should touch the Qur'an except the person who is in a state of purity. Reading the Noble Qur'an is also forbidden, as it is reported that Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, said, The Prophet 
used to recite the Qur'an upon leaving the toilet and he would eat camel meat with us. Nothing prevented him from reading the Qur'an except being in a state of janabah. This is also the case concerning staying in the masjid. This is because of Allah saying, O you who believe, approach not the prayer when you are in a drunken state until you know that is the meaning of what you utter nor while you are in a state of janaba that is in a state of sexual impurity and have not yet taken a bath except while traveling on the way where there is not enough water or just passing through a mosque until you take the prescribed bath leaving our discussion concerning the obligatory ghusl due to ritual impurity aside we turn to the recommended ghusl it is recommended for a Muslim to make ghusl before going to the Friday prayer. This is because of the Prophet's saying, whoever makes wudu on Jumu'ah has done well. And whoever takes a bath, then taking a bath is better for him. It is also recommended to take a bath before assuming the state of ihram for Umrah or Hajj. Zayd ibn Thabit, may Allah be pleased with him, said that he saw the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, take off his regular clothes and take a bath for Hajj. And it is recommended to take a bath after washing the dead. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, whoever washes the dead should take a bath, that is, thereafter. It is recommended to bathe after each round of sexual intercourse as well. For Abu Rafi' said, The Prophet, peace be upon him, visited all his wives and had sexual intercourse with each one of them in a single night, and he bathed after each wife's visit. Then I said to him, Why not take a single bath, O Messenger of Allah? He replied, This is cleaner and purer. <laughs>